Astero Black and I am taking my 30 years of experience on the front lines of emergency response and emergency management. Well, hello everyone. I'm Daryl Black and I'm here to talk to you. This is technically episode, I think, number 29 of my Lead from the Inside Out podcast. And uh, I'll be talking to you about the one thing that can make all the difference in the world. And it is just one thing. Now, I've had a lot of experience responding to crises over the well, last 30 years or so. And um, I've often thought, or I've been asked a lot of times, like, Daryl, why do you do it? Like, you always see the worst in people, you know, Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita and a bunch of floods and wildfires and search and rescue missions and all sorts of death and destruction and, and all those kinds of things. And my answer is actually the same every single time. And that's, I actually have the most amazing opportunity to see people come together. Because you see, ultimately, I think, I know people are good. People at the individual level are inherently good people. Now, I know what you're thinking. Right, we've seen on social media all the douchebags and assholes that are stockpiling as opposed to stocking up, and I, I get that. That that irritates me as well. But ultimately, the way I look at it is that's a small subset of the population. And again, I I do have it on very good authority that people are ultimately good, and they will do the best that they can in any given situation. Are there exceptions? Absolutely, there are. Now. I have spent over 30 years in crisis leadership and I'm now a leadership consultant and all of that other stuff. But um, one of the, the examples I, I often use too is, you know, when we go to her, we went to Hurricane Katrina and we were, we were there for, I think about 10 days or so. And, um, you know, we came across a bunch of, you know, whole range of individuals. And I thought to myself, you know, that sure, in terms of preparedness and, and um, uh, you know, ability to cope, there was a wide range as well. We had one end of the spectrum that was like outstanding, super dialed in. And then another end of the spectrum that maybe wasn't quite as dialed in. But ultimately, when I looked at the difference between this group that maybe was suffering quite a bit in this group, it really came down to at its very, very fundamental level is responsibility. And not just any responsibility, but personal responsibility. So I am here to tell you and talk to you about being personally responsible during crisis, whether it be COVID, whether it be floods, whether it be wildfire fires, evacuations, anything like that. The principle of being personally responsible as a leader holds true no matter what. So what is the definition? It's really, um, I, I have to read this out because there are many, many different definitions, but it's the idea that human beings choose, instigate, or otherwise cause their own actions. So in other words, you are taking responsibility for how you behave, the decisions you make, the words you use, um, the, 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 the life you lead the type of team that you belong to, the type of team that you lead, how you lead, all of those things ultimately comes down to you, the leader. And this ties directly into the crisis that we're facing on a global scale. And I'm going to be tying it in here throughout this, uh, throughout this episode. So in terms of being personally responsible, what does it mean in practical terms, right? I just read off a definition, but from a practical perspective, particularly around, say, COVID-19, it's lead by good example first and foremost and oftentimes as leaders we we like to lead by example and that's pretty cliche i would submit to you that we want to lead by add the word good example so what does that mean well it means treating people with the utmost respect it means being compassionate being empathetic being vulnerable managing your stress or being calm walking the walk and when we talk about COVID-19 specific kind of tactics and, and things like that. It can be as specific as washing your hands, using hand sanitizer, self-isolating. Don't ask somebody else to, to uh, tell you to self-isolate, for example. If you're feeling sick, don't go out anywhere. 
And again, when you come inside from outside, wash your hands, you're leaving, all of that personal hygiene that comes up when we're talking about things like COVID-19. So ultimately speaking, you need to take responsibility for that. There is not going to be always an external entity or agency or somebody else telling you. And the point I'm trying to make here is that ultimately, success and failure for COVID-19 in any crisis comes down to individuals and the exercising of personal responsibility. So when I talked about Katrina and, and the spectrum, I was absolutely, and this is, this is something I've seen time and time again, I'm just using Katrina as just an example. Um, the, the folks that I talked about that really were well prepared, they were not the ones that were, that were the most wealthy. They were not the ones that had more physical means than anybody else. They weren't the ones that um, weren't impacted by the hurricane, for example. They were the ones that actually decided to work together, but more importantly, take personal responsibility and not depend on government, not to depend on anyone else except themselves and take it upon themselves to take care of themselves and their family, the vulnerable people in their lives, all of those things. So ultimately the personality that is willing to take responsibility is the one that will succeed and fail. Now, the good news is society, any kind of group, is made up of individuals. So if each individual took personal responsibility, then that will have an aggregate kind of effect or compounding effect society-wide. And if you don't believe me, just trust me on that. If we all do our part, we will all get through this thing. So from a leadership perspective, first and foremost, take personal responsibility. And that's you there. And now the next unit that you have is typically your, your family, right? So take care of them as well. So don't be looking outside yet. Don't be looking for government help and, and handouts and all those other things. Look at yourself first and then look at your family, making sure that you're stocking up and not stockpiling. Again, if you're stockpiling, you fall into the probably, and I get it. I understand there are some people that are are very, very fearful and they are definitely stockpiling without any um, you know, thought of what about our vulnerable populations. And that is very, very normal. But like I said, that's actually the exception. Most people will, will come together and, and I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. So take personal responsibility as you, the individual, take care of your own family, take care of your own team. Now, maybe it's, uh, it's just reinforcing positive behaviors. Maybe it's just enforcing hygiene, enforcing washing the hands. It doesn't have to be incredibly difficult. And something that I've done in my own life, in my own situation, is my parents, my mom has uh, has dementia and uh, my dad is elderly as well. And so obviously they have some challenges and they would be by any definition vulnerable and they live at home. So understanding that it's up to us the able and willing individuals in my parents' lives, so my brother and I, we are coordinating our efforts and ensuring that we are taking care of my mom and dad. We're not expecting anybody to come in and help them through COVID-19. Now, there's some other healthcare, home care issues that have been going on for a very, very long time, but relative to COVID-19, it's, it's on my brother and I. So I've taken personal responsibility. I'm taking care of my son who's 12, Hunter. I'm taking care of my parents. And I'm not saying that to be heroic or anything like that. It all comes down to taking personal responsibility and making sure that the people in your life have what they need. In my experience, broadly speaking, there, there are, are victors in life and there are victims. And the victims are the ones that will never succeed in crisis, to be honest. They'll never learn how to lead in crisis. They'll never learn how to function in crisis because it is always a blame game. It's always a woe is me. It's always looking outside at external factors. That is not what will get you through COVID-19 or any other crisis. The blame game, the fear mongering, the negativity, that gets you absolutely nowhere. That's the victim game and victims stay victims. 
On this hand, though, we have what we call victors. And these are the individuals that exercise healthy doses of personal responsibility. They are the ones that say, you know what, this sucks. It's shitty. Well, and honestly, do you think I like being encouraged to stay home? Do you think I love the fact that my son is now at home versus school every day? Well, I don't love that, but it is what it is. And so taking personal responsibility says, all right, I'm going to be a victor out of this. What can I do to make this situation better? What can I do to use this potential danger as an opportunity? That's what victors do. That's what leaders do. That's what gets us through crisis. And if we have enough people doing this and acting responsibly, then society in general, whether it be at a, at a local level, like a community, growing to your, your municipality, to state or province, to country, to globally, if we had everybody that was in the victor category that was taking responsibility and doing the things that they need to do without being told, then we will all be better off and we will all get through this. Now, I've seen it, time, and I've already seen it. Uh, an example would be like the school board, for example, at least in, in my area, canceled classes or live classes or, or uh, in-school classes. And newsflash, I think my son's going to be pretty upset when he realizes it's actually not canceling school till the end of, you know, till the end of the year. But shh, that's just our little secret. But um, so I read on social media because that's where, you know, all of the great meeting of the minds is. Just kidding. Um, and somebody said, wow. And this, so today as we record this, this is uh, Monday. Right. Yeah. So the announcement was yesterday, Sunday, a weekend. So sure enough, somebody goes on to Facebook and says, wow, why couldn't they have told or it would have been nice if they would have told us this on Friday. So at least we'd have all weekend to prepare. Well, newsflash, these situations evolve rapidly. And do you think that people in government, people in, in, in decision making areas are sitting back and saying, you know what? How can we screw people over as much as possible in this? Okay, that's our objective. It's to actually screw people over and make life as difficult as possible. Yeah, that's our objective today. So let's make sure we accomplish that. I'm here to tell you as an individual that has been in those discussions, I promise you, the last thing anybody wants to do is cause more disruption than they have to. So when you hear about states of local emergency and now, you know, eventually curfews and, and just all of the things that go along with states of, of emergency and pandemic, that is not, those aren't decisions that are taken lightly. So quit blaming other people, quit being a keyboard warrior, right? Getting on Facebook and talking about how bad the world is and be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And part of that solution, like I said, really comes down to taking responsibility on a personal level to get through this. And as I keep saying, if we, if we all do that, then we're going to get through this thing. And as a leader, walk the walk, lead by a very good example, wash your hands, hand sanitizer, uh, self-isolate, all of those COVID-19 related things. But more, more so than that, be a good person, be compassionate, be empathetic. I've talked about that previously. Be vulnerable and be responsible for your own actions. You alone are responsible for the outcome in, in your life, really, if you want to get even deeper on it. So I want to really stress on that. And also, too, I'm, I'm going to be talking about this in future episodes, but social media uh, I've watched with great interest with regard to the social media impact on, in this particular case, COVID-19 and, and how it has evolved. And I really hope that we see social media and, and use social media as a good tool to enable people to gather help or, and, and, and send it where it needs to go. I want to use it to spread positivity and optimism and create empowerment rather than victim mentality. So be very, very mindful of that. And frankly, you know, if didn't your mom say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I actually will take that a little bit further. If you don't have, if you don't have anything nice, positive, and all you have is negativity and fear, don't say anything, keep it to yourself. 
because frankly, we all have to be positive. We all have to be responsible. And as I said, that's what will get us through this thing. So as a leader, your responsibility is you, your family, your team, and it grows outwards. And if we're all doing that, then we are all going to be better off for this. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And um, I have, uh, I'll be doing a lot more episodes on this. Uh, and as I said, this is episode 29, I think, of my podcast. So I'll leave a link to where you can get the other videos and, and transcripts uh, as well. And moving forward, we will be uh, publishing at a little bit more rapid rate because I want to help. I want people to be more coming from a position of power and empowerment rather than victimhood and fear and stress. We've got enough stress. We have enough fear in this world. Let's... Uh, Let's use this as an opportunity to come together, whatever that looks like virtually. Let's come together and help each other. And that's that's me. That's what I'm trying to do here and doing my part. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to, to leave them below, uh, whether it be on this live here or in the replay. I'll be hopping back in. But um, yeah, we will be definitely coming to a social feed near you in the near future. Thanks for watching.